I don't think I've ever been able to be over the moon and disappointed with the season at the very same time. But last season pretty much was that in a nutshell for us, in the sense that I think we were probably the best team in the league in most cases and just had some terrible fortune and just couldn't take our chances at the right moment. Ended up finishing fourth, which kind of sucks. But at the same time, I still think it's a good step in the right direction. The team has completely flipped into what I want it to be. And our European success really does give me hope that there might actually be a chance that we could win the Conference League for a third time in this save with another team. And that would actually be really, really fun for me. But today we turn our attention to the transfer window, trying to make sure that this team is in the best possible position to take all that on next year with goalkeepers, goalkeepers, single, singular goalkeeper and lots of defensive strength. So today we move. As always, of course, if you have been enjoying the series, do drop a like on it. That would be fantastic. Um, thank you for all of you sticking with me up to this point. The fact that we're 120-odd episodes in is actually kind of mad. And we really are very much in the home stretch right now, as there's really only a couple more weeks left before things uh, have to completely finish off. So hopefully, we can get a lovely bit of success before then. That's the hope. Now, before we get into any squad building stuff, I just wanted to highlight something that I just thought was... What's the word I'm looking for here? Really stupid. So you might notice here that the board have said, make the most of set pieces playing style disappointed. We were extremely disappointed that the team has not developed into a consistent and capable set piece threat. And I'm like, I totally get that. I completely understand that we haven't done enough from set pieces this season, as we've only scored 16 goals from corners, which is more than three times that of any other team, and mm, nearly as much as the four teams behind us combined. I just don't think we're threatening enough from set pieces. Starting to think that the board might be involved in the nomads and maybe a bit of huffing their own supply at this point. I realise that the reason that's happening is because we don't have play for set pieces turned on. And no matter how many goals you score from set pieces, if you don't have that switched on, they don't care because that makes sense. Because in a lot of these transfer streams, we're actually starting like probably a month and a half later than we have done in the previous ones with the Red Brew, because obviously with our uh, European contention, we were certainly in there a lot longer, which is actually going to give us a bit less time with which to find and bring some players in. So that's certainly worth noting. Now, as for the way this team is lining up, I'm extremely happy with our strike force at the moment. Uh, Noj, Martin, fantastic. I love that Jaferovic is our, our third best striker. You know what, as a deep lying forward, he's not even that awful. If I desperately needed an auxiliary um, Dilf, he'd be the guy. Don't even know if he's married. But let's not forget as well that we do have our Serbian striker friend joining us to join Noj. So we should have a really strong strike force. I'll quickly run through you through him in a second as well. So strikers, not a problem for me whatsoever. The midfield, again, very, very happy with the lineups that we've got there with Vatsa, Amion, Darbo, Undai, Kuasi. It's such a strong set of players that we have in that core of the team. And obviously with Young Dean in there too. Completely happy with the situation there. I think that maybe with another... Actually, I still think that our whole midfield and strike force is absolutely stacked. The wingback spots are utterly brilliant right now. With Sierra and Duda on the left-hand side. Kiriakou and Pablo Rodriguez on the right. It's the defence. It really is. Defence and goalkeeper. Makacek is on a rolling contract at the moment. So he's not going to probably be around. We need that really strong keeper. And if we can find him... Oh, boy, damn. I wish we could still go after that guy that was at uh, the Venezuelan club. But sadly, he's signed for Sidious. Jaferovic is the key guy. If we could find two more Jaferovic and really not lose anybody else, I'd be pretty happy with that because then it would allow our starting guys who did okay but not spectacularly to become rotation options and then strengthen elsewhere. It really is going to be a case of goalkeeper and defenders today. I want goalkeepers and I want centre-backs. And luckily, the game, generally speaking, is quite uh, generous when it comes to generating good centre-backs. Um, basically, what I mean by that is I'm going to go to Serbia and find some guys from FK Partizan because that's usually how this works. But before that, I want to show you a couple of players that are joining us in case you missed it. First, obviously, is Mohamed Amin Amri. He's going to be returning from his loan it does have a permanent uh, clause on the end of it of £1 million, which I'm not entirely sure if I'm on board with, but it's happened now. More importantly, though, is Igor Varga. Uh, he will be joining us, of course, in January as well to give us a secondary striker option that can replace Noj when he likes to drop out of the team a little bit. Still has the low composure, unfortunately, but he does have some really good trifecta and he's decently quick as well. Uh, so I'm pretty happy to bring him in and just give us someone else that can come in and is probably better than uh, Babacar Cisse. There's actually one other player that I picked up on, during the last video that I forgot to mention because, again, sometimes my camera just dies and I don't notice. And that's just Chappie here, Ibrahim Gay. Uh, he's joining us on a free transfer. The only reason I signed him, basically, is because 18-year-old and also for free. So because he's completely free, I figured there was actually nothing to lose by bringing this chap in. I don't think he's really going to play a great deal for us next season, but he does have a bit of pace about him. He can operate in that wing-back role. We'll see what he's actually like pros and cons-wise when he joins us. But when a player of this kind of quality becomes available for free, you're kind of silly if you don't try to pick them up because his value, I'm guessing, is going to be at least a million quid. What I've also done is, obviously, the scouting has been done and that's starting to work right now. We've got more scouts, so it should be quicker. The other thing I've done is I went and got team reports on the under- 
19 squads of every side in the top two divisions in Sweden. So I used the national team scouting filter that we've got here on the, uh, well, this is actually their senior team, but this you go. This is their B team. Because the report only lasts 30 days when you do uh, a team report, it, a lot of these guys will be good, but don't worry, these guys weren't any good. But anyone who looked even half decent, I then sent into our scouting room because I want to get some young Swedish talent if we can do. Now you'll see that some of them are upon a second look have not actually turned out to be as good, but some of them might genuinely still be quite tasty in there too. So we should have a lot of Swedish talent in our scout reports over this window as well. There are some really good players I found from Sweden. There was a guy from Sundsvall last year, but they wanted 20 million quid for a 16 year old. Uh, he was like better than young Dean, which is really saying something. One other quick thing. Uh, someone asked me how I got the XG tables up. So basically the way you do that is you go into Data Hub, then Team Performance, and then you can add anything you like in here. But the one you want is under... Um, oh, actually, I don't know what it's under because I have it pinned in here. Basically, you'll find it somewhere in here. There was something called XG Table, and then you can just pin it here, and that's how you get to it, basically. So incredibly, and I mean incredibly here, Noj has just won FIFA Best Under-21 Men's Player. That is insane to do that for us. And he was European Golden Boy. 45 goals? I assume that must include include like international stuff presumably and like i don't know how that's happened unless it's friendlies or something because he definitely doesn't have that many goals for us grassy as well third on african football of the year along with a guy at milan and a guy at real madrid we have had some bids for Noj. luckily they are nowhere near his release clause uh, which is literally double what some of these teams are bidding so we're gonna have to be very careful with him through this transfer window because the last thing we need to do is lose him so i think the plan really is at, what i always do in this situation basically is i will stall these bids for as long as i physically can because basically what that does is it one puts off the time that i have to piss him off two generally speaking teams up their bids when you reject them if they really want that player and the more we can stall them the less bids they actually get to put in and thus in theory should stop them from getting closer and closer to that release course because i don't really think we've got much choice in the matter at the moment um but this is a little bit scary i love that they want us to pay his wages while they buy him off of us in a hostile takeover. How about piss off, Severe? The closest one there is 11.5 million, though, with Leipzig. So we've got to be careful with these. Obviously, I'll store them all, and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, we've also got bits on Kuwasi, too, but I don't think Kuwasi has a release clause uh, anymore. As far as I'm aware, he's one of the guys that doesn't have one. So I'm quite happy to just sort of let these guys uh, swivel on it, frankly. Um, we'll have to upset him, but I think we should be able to convince him to come around pretty quickly with someone like Kuwasi, particularly as I think he's got a long-term deal. But we knew this was going to be a problem when we had such an important season, and obviously with both of these two getting on awards stuff it means that obviously they're on the national like headlines these days in terms of football so they'll definitely be highly wanted if we get out this window hanging on to both kwasi and Noj, then i'll be very very happy um i did say that i'd be willing to sell someone like a rona and die potentially because i feel like he could be replaced and he's got enormous value uh Kawasi, though i think is actually more important to us he scores goals and he gets assists right then our transfer window has now officially opened which means we've got a couple of lads joining us in, in other good news i turned down the transfers for Noj and kwasi obviously eventually when they came back around uh Noj complained but seems to be okay at the moment basically what i told him uh, and this is good if you've got a player with a relatively high release clause and and his is 22 and a half million and the clubs aren't really getting close to that with the bids i just basically said to him if they trigger your release clause i'll sell you because at the end of the day it keeps him happy now and if they do trigger the release clause i don't have a choice to sell him anyway so it's kind of good on both sides the other good thing was i was able to talk to kuasi and convince him to stay regardless so he's actually not no interested in leaving so that's kind of good news now on to the other stuff here firstly ibrahim Agay is in on a Oh my lord. Okay, that's good. I was expecting it to be worth like a million quid, but the fact that it's 6.4 to 7.8 million for a free transfer. The one I'm excited about is Igor Varga. He was 950 grand. <laughs> yes. Okay, that really has made me feel a lot better about our striking options this season with Varga joining us too. And because those players were already paid for, that hasn't affected our transfer budget one iota. We could comfortably actually be spending more like 5 million if I find the right players. I'm still looking out for goalkeepers. I've actually got a priority like scout thing out for them i also did a scout meeting because i actually added my own custom stuff to the scout meeting to give them the option to go after some more goalkeepers and they have brought me some interesting players but i want to scout them a lot further because i really do want to make sure we try to find a really strong top quality keeper but keepers in fm are so hard to find because their attributes half the time don't seem to make any difference in games you just have a guy who just seems to work and we need to find that guy for us and at the moment we just don't have that so in amongst all of the scouting we were doing we obviously look at often in the african nations and one of the nations i find that often ha this happens with is nigeria especially often you'll find players that will generate solely to be in the international team squad so you'll notice that he doesn't have a club and he never has had a club is uche Lowell here the great thing about that though is when you get the scout report through you can just offer them a trial and then just keep them at the club for a little bit to learn about them and at the moment except in a few areas he's not fantastic but i must say there's a few things about him that i kind of like and if we were you know getting fully scouted because he'll only be here for a month 
bring him in on a free transfer, I actually think he's quite a potentially good option for us, just as a, another young player to bring in, particularly at 16. Here's a fun fact. This is just a blast from the past thing for you here. Uh, Stifalele Madon Sailor. Do you remember him? Signing from Supersport United for Suniuska quite a long time ago now, 10 years ago. They sold him to Dortmund for 45, 35 million. He went to Bayern for 66 million, Manchester City for 68 million, and now Arsenal for 61 million. He was linked with Liverpool as well. He's moved in his career for 230 million pounds in transfer fees. And that's a guy we got for 500k. Oh! Jesus Christ, fair play, Sifalele. Think of the signing on fees he's getting. I'm so proud of him. So we're getting Lawal, but it has just occurred to me with players like this that he's not going to join us for another two years. <laughs> In the future, Uche, I'm sure you're going to be fantastic. I just don't think we're ever going to see you play for us. Also important to remember, we have um, Europa Conference League action today as well, because the group stages are obviously done, but we have the knockouts today. So that's all going to be, into, well, not all, but depends on how far we go in today's video as well. There's this chap here, Robert Davison, uh, Davison, an Icelandic keeper. Now, ignoring this for a sec, his attributes are actually really solid. He's got 70 aerial reach, six foot four. Great, solid command of area. Good handling, kicking one-on-ones, which is decent. Reflexes of 15 as well. A little bit higher eccentricity than I would perhaps like. He's quite low down on scout reports, but I kind of like this guy. Then there's also this guy here, Kevin Maffler. Or 31 year old Colum sorry, 34-year-old Colombian. Plays for FC Copenhagen. He's certainly more well-rounded. 6'2". Great determination. Oh, he's quite good as well, isn't he? But at the moment, I'd say it's definitely between those two, uh, Maffler and my man uh, Davidson here, who I'm interested in. Davidson's interesting. I think one, because of his uh, the money he's on, and I think his wage would be a lot lower as well. But also, I just think he's better than that would suggest. But I'm going to get them both scouted fully and we can have a proper comparison. If there's any more that come along, then I'm interested as well. You can see that we've still got loads of other players knocking about. Unfortunately, this guy here uh, was one we were interested at one point. You can see he's already joining Porto. So yeah, that's just not happening. Uh, there's also... Hang on a minute. Just just hold the phone. It's a it's a left back called Pablo Rodriguez. We have a right back called Pablo Rodriguez. <laughs> I realize our Pablo is better than their Pablo. But wouldn't it be amazing if we had two Pablo Rod two Uruguayan Pablo Rodriguez is in the same team? <laughs> what would they put on their shirts? They don't even have middle names. I, I mean <laughs> I always want to try and sign it based on that alone. He's not exactly fantastic compared to his compatriot, but he is extremely he's solid. We'll keep scouting him. Brent Makalele. Um, which is a fantastic name, and I would hope that he could play the Makalele role for us. He literally can't, but he'll make his own Makalele role. thing I like about him, obviously, great physical attributes, lovely height about him. He's 15 pace on a centre-back as well, which is really nice to see. Solid tackling, decent marking, okay positioning. Heading is the one that lets him down a little bit. I still think he's the type of player I would like to try. I think we just need to find another centre-back, and to bring someone like Brent Makalele in, I think would be a good choice for us. 500k. Oh, he's a release clause. Oh. 500k for that, for him, that's fantastic. Done. I'll pay £500,000 for Brent McAlele. I thought it was going to be like, you know, 2 million quid. That's fine. Well, he's interested on a squad player term, which is fine. Wages, I think, would be probably about 5k, I suspect. Yeah, 4.6. Has he got any international caps? Not yet. But he probably will do, I think. We're much closer on the likes of Maffler and our other friendo here now. Um, the problem with Maffler is the, is the wage. 13 grand a week he's on at his current club. Like, when you compare Maffler and Davidson. This is what I mean. You can see that generally speaking, uh, other than the eccentricity, which honestly, I don't even consider that a good thing, right? They are very closely matched. Maffler is better at the distribution here, slightly faster, maybe tiny bit better mentals, not even close. I mean, physically better, their shot stopping better. Sweeper, for sweeper keeper on defend, which is kind of what we're looking for here. The aerial reach is a really big plus on Robert Davidson. I do wonder if that sort of, then again, that doesn't really apply for command of area because they're both the same on that one. Communication's the same, first touch is the same, handling is a tiny bit worse, kicking's a tiny bit better, one on one's a tiny bit worse. Our anticipation is better and his aggression is much higher. Uh, he does does lack the composure, but it's only minor. Concentration, again, slightly minor. Decisions, again, slightly minor. Uh, positioning the same. He does have much worse vision, though. I think we should try and sign both of them. I want to say try and sign both of them. I mean, literally try and sign both of them. Not actually sign both of them, but attempt to sign them and then see what it looks like when we actually break it down. They want £52,000 for Robert Daffertson. And I feel like, if nothing else, he's very much worth £52,000. Yeah, they want 550 so literally 10 times the price. Is he 10 times better? Obviously, 10 times better at this point is not really the point. The fact is, they're both technically affordable. So Davidson wants 2.9 to 3k, or 3.9 a week, potentially, on a backup. And Maffler, do we just sign them both? I wasn't actually planning on signing them both. He wants a very short-term deal anyway. First choice keeper. The other guy's happy to be a backup. If one doesn't work out, we can flip to the other anyway. But you can sort of see how slim pickings it is with keepers at the moment. 2.9k a week. With a relegation release clause, we're not getting relegated. I'm actually all right with bringing him in on a three-year contract for 2.9k a week as a backup goalkeeper. Oh, those annoying two Columbia caps are a bit pa a pain in the ass. <laughs> you're not having a yearly wage rise if you're not going to wiggle room on your wages. It's quite a lot, honestly. 
but it is only a short-ish term deal. And my hope is that one of these two will just claim that role and actually play really well for us. But we'll have to see. At least we could try them out. I think we might have to do that. It's not a deal I feel uber comfortable with. I don't think it's the best deal we could have got, but I think we almost kind of had to because there was just no other goalkeepers coming around that I could see. Let me just have one last look at our scouted keepers, see if there's anyone mad in here that we could look at. So there's Matic Palvin, plays for Lecce. He's good, but... £7 million and look at the wage. We've got Belenenses as well. Got to prioritise those assignments, see what happens. Um, we can always stall and delay their transfers if we need to, just so I can get a bit of knowledge on these other guys, just to see if there is anyone potentially that could be better than them. But I think we're pretty much on a bit of a brick wall at the moment. We had our first cup game and we won 8-0. Now, it was basically the same squad as last year. And I do think there's an element of just, we had a lot of young players. Those players are just going to get better and gel into this team a little bit more. And we really did show off all the qualities that this team can show. Okay, so Makalele is in as well. I think he's a decent addition, if not perfect right now, but it does at least strengthen us in that position. We've got more players that we have at our disposal. Next game in the cup, away at Kalmar. Annoying to only draw this one one all, but it did probably allow us to qualify for the next round if we win our final game against the second tier side. So I guess we'll just take that. Still technically pre-season. We were definitely the better side and we still look very good. Just wasn't quite our day in front of goal, sadly. Here we go then. UEFA Europa Conference League second round draw today. Now there are some big sides in it. We've got Roma, we've got Spurs, but there's also the likes of Aris and Dunas Castreira and even HJK. Basically, I feel like if we avoid the top four here, Besiktas, Roma, Tottenham, PSV, but it goes down pretty quickly. And as far as I know, it's not seeded. This, this could be huge for us. Come on. Oh! <laughs> That might be the best draw of the lot, potentially. Away at Aris from Greece. This goalkeeper, uh, this is Kalso Sanka from Belenech, the guy I showed briefly, I think, earlier. He's my other option that I'm potentially interested in bringing in. He's a bit younger than, than, than Maffler, and I feel like he offers a lot of the same things that Maffler does, just... Maffler has some unnecessary stuff in certain positions. And his aerial reach is phenomenal in theory. Now, the problem is I've already laid them once and now a second time. So we may have to do a... This may have to be a big cheeky one where we basically just cancel the Maffler deal at the last minute. Go for Kalsov Sanka and get these two over the line instead. Him and our Icelandic friendo. The final cup game of the group stages. A 5-1 thrashing. Martin with two. Two for Varga off the bench as well. He's looked absolutely lightning uh, when coming into this team off the bench. And I honestly feel like even if we went into this season with the same squad, which we're obviously not going to because we've already got new players in. I think the same squad we have last year could win the league this year. I genuinely do, because I think they're better than that now, because the players have improved, and I think we could have won it last year. So the day has come on these two goalkeepers. I just don't have enough info on that other guy in order to make a, an informed decision, and because I just, if he's on the lower end of a lot of that stuff, he's much worse than Maffler. And I feel like for the safety of the team, for, particularly over the short term, I feel like Maffler could be a decent option for us at the moment. If we had more time, then maybe, but I think we're just going to go with the two original lads rather than the um, the guinea Bissau guy from Belenench. Uh, we'll get him fully scouted anyway and see if we maybe missed out, but I feel like we just kind of need these two keepers now. So Davidson's in as a backup. I actually still like him as a backup keeper. I think he'll definitely get some game time for us this season as well because I think he's... I don't know. He just seems like he's got some good attributes that I quite like. That eccentricity could be a problem, but he's got such good aerial reach and good reflexes. And with Maffler coming in as well, it just mm, that punching tendency is a little bit concerning, honestly. I think he's decent. Maybe I'm just being swayed by that honestly we'll see what the other guys like but we've got them both now they're in and i think now i want to just focus on finding one more center back really to really just strengthen that part of the team and maybe just blow some money on one so in terms of defenders that would sign for us at the moment uh, or are unsure about something there's 188 that we've scouted in total over the last however long so i find that the scouted tab is really useful just sometimes guys just slip through the net um I'm, this is less important to me because often this is based around the league they're playing and you notice that a lot of these guys either play in africa or south america which is why this is higher I'm using this as a general starting point, but I want to look for slightly younger players because there's Mabasso here, who's at Esbia, probably a bit... Mm, the wage would probably be way too much for us, although I do kind of like him, honestly. Mm, the best homegrown lad is this this lad here, um, Thorthria Christiansen, who actually would probably be very expensive because he plays for AIK. Low aggression, uh, good physicals, solid defender, honestly, but the question is how much do they want? Yeah, 4.7, we can't afford... I mean, the wage would be fine, but I can't drop minimum of 4.1 million on this guy honestly or do we do we just push the boat out on someone it, see what they want in see what they actually want they'd go for 2.5 up front 1.5 over three years and then 800k the thing i like about him is that he actually does have good attributes and he's homegrown swedish which would really help us out i'm thinking because not super long term anymore because i know that we've got limited time left in the save and i'm now thinking about what could we do in the pre what in the present could help us a lot the only one is squad player but 4.9 for five years we can afford it in terms of the wage budget it. I kind of want to. I think he might add to us. Plus, he's homegrown. And from what I can see, other than, again, the heading, he's got the jumping reach. I do kind of like him still. Well, he's in. I think attribute-wise, the heading is the one thing. 
about him that I'm not overly convinced by. But I think that for a homegrown player that actually has good attributes in this team, I think he's decent, which doesn't actually leave us with a great deal of money left in the bank. A million quid and 20.1k. If he's massively on the lower end of this and I can negotiate a good deal, I'd be tempted. It's not awful, you know. They've actually gone for it. 750 up front million over three years and then another 250k that would allow us to stay within our budgets for this year sign another it will depend so heavily on because that way we've got a, home, a, no, a homegrown guy and a non-homegrown guy as well and that will give us three new center backs plenty of rotation options for this season where we're rotating in and out for certain games and i think that would give us what we need oh that's so high and obviously he's got 57 caps for south africa they're really not willing to negotiate much at all these days are they they just want the wage and then no matter what you offer them unless you're offering them international caps they're just like no i don't care about that stuff give me money yeah so I looked at the Swedish Cup and I thought, wow, there's barely any big sides left in this. We could have a chance at winning it. And then we lost it to our opponent's only shot on target of the match in the 91st minute. And bear in mind, their first shot of the match was in the 87th minute. We limited them to zero shots in the first 87 minutes of the game. Couldn't score. And then, of course, they score with their only chance. It's happened. I'm still unsure on this. Honestly, I'm kind of not caring about star ratings at this point. I think he's fine. He's not the best in the tackle, honestly. But again, I do still think that the two the guys we signed, I think, are better than what we had. And it at least gives us strength because we have, at the very least, not lost any of those guys either. Out wide for Sierra. I mean, we've really got to just turn some of that form from the group stages into some form in the knockouts here. And we've got a great chance to do so. Hopefully, it's Martin's header already puts us 1-0 up inside 20 minutes. We've not even been that good. Martinez started the season ferociously, though. And we really needed that start. Darmo from a good spot here to maybe grab a second for us. He's got a great strike on him. What an effort. It's too into the bottom corner. We're kind of mugging them off a little bit here. But if we can get back home with any kind of advantage, it would be huge. Rodriguez fires one through. Nodge is there. He's just slipped it home. And it's 3-0 Orebru away from home. We have really made the most of our chances today. Almost making up for that cup defeat. I'll take the European success instead if it means that. Oh, ball through. And Marina's in. Is there a chance back for Aris? He's drilled it home. And it is a goal back for Aris in the 87th minute. No more than they deserve. 3-0 would have been good. 2 3 three, one, still pretty good, though. In the end, I think we did about enough to edge it. But you can really see how poor we were, especially in the first half of this game. But Martin, Dabo, and of course, Nodge getting us a 3-1 victory away in Greece. We always find that we're generally very good in Europe. And our ability to score goals in European games is genuinely astonishing. That takes us to 48 goals this season. The record in this competition is 59. And we've already put three pass in the first leg. I think we're in a great show out at a quarterfinal appearance at this rate. And that would be amazing. The draw will be very soon. So we'll find out potentially who we could face all the way up to the semis. Right, here we go. Here's the draws. This is first for the quarters, then we'll do the semis. Who are we going to get? Oh, not automatic. Hang on, I want full draw. Here we go. And we get Bran or Midgeland. I think we could take Bran or Midgeland in the quarterfinals. Honestly, I really, really do. That could give us a really good shot at something else. Right, final one. Come on. What do we get? We do. We do avoid the Spurs one, at least. But we would, if we were to get through that, play the winner of that side, which would be very, very tough in the semifinals. But honestly, if we reach the Europa Conference League semi, I would be over the moon with that. Oh, my God. Inside 20 seconds. I wasn't even commentating because it was the opening highlight of the game and there's almost never any goals and they've just been able to score already. Come on, lads. You're better than that. Um, I hope this isn't the start of something magically bad. Kiriakou slips it through for Nodge. Can he take the keeper on? It doesn't need to because it's 1-1 one, one here and 4-2 to one aggregate. It's Van Nodge. Fourth goal of the season for him. He has just been consistent as hell so far this season. Funovic just yeets that for no reason, but now we've got a chance. It's Igor Varga. Good touch round the goalkeeper and smashes it into the back of the net. And it's 5 2 on aggregate. Now we're going to get the win on the night, which is great. Varga is proving to be an absolutely brilliant super sub in games when we need him. And that's going to be good. The occasional cheeky ball in behind is very necessary here. Rodriguez got to find the right pass. He does. It's Varga again. And Varga slops it home again. It's 3 1 on the night. Igor Varga once again does it. Another six goals scored in a tie. That takes us to 51 goals scored in this competition this year. Well, there we go. Through to the quarterfinals. 6 2, 3 1 in both legs. Uh, this game we were definitely better overall. Took us a little while to get going once again, but they played a very narrow system. Him. And the moment we kind of started operating down the wings a bit more, it was all good. Varga, though, with another two goals from the bench. He's yet to start, I think, a game for us so far. And I think he's already netted five times for us off the bench. So the, ga the guy's got talent. And it will be Braun in the quarterfinals. They knock Midgelan out. So a Norwegian side we will face fascinating actually spurs despite a red card do scrape past hjk in the end there as rangers beat besiktas on penalties as well so ooh, this is getting more and more interesting but to sort of sum up our activities it's actually been we've made no money i was expecting to do some kind of wheeling and dealing uh, nobody ever came back in for any of those players i was interested in potentially moving on uh, nobody's for trifunovic despite interest uh, they never came back in for Meleleke either, which is makes me kind of wish we'd done the 1.6 million deal, honestly, but there you go. But I think we've still strengthened this team. Uh, we've got Gay on free. Varga's really helped the strike force. Uh, Makaleli, I think, is a really good signing at 400k. Maffler, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, Davison didn't cover himself in glory in the cup, admittedly, but he is a cheap signing and gives good backup, at least. So we're at least stable in that zone right now. I think we could have maybe found better guys. It's just been so few keepers out there that I thought looked really good, honestly. Uh, Christiansen, a lot of money. 
but does at least give us a homegrown option and that will allow us to free up more space in the squad. And that's really useful, particularly for bench places. I find that sometimes maybe in games we were suffering because we weren't able to bring the same quality off the bench as other sides. Those that had benches, that is. Most of them do now. And then Mabasso. I still think it's a good win, though, if not amazing, honestly. I was kind of hoping we could rustle up a bit more cash. I'd loaned out for Fana um, to Elfsborg as well, just because he wanted to go. There is a £500,000 clause on that. Uh, only optional if they want to actually buy him permanently. But you know what? I'm pretty pleased with the way that we're shaping up right now. Like, we're through to the Conference League quarterfinals. I think we've got an excellent shot at a semi-final run if we can get past Braun. I think we should be able to get past Braun. I think we're better than them. And obviously, the league starts pretty damn soon as well. So it's going to ramp up massively fast straight away. But I want to see how far we can go. There's also uh, both EK Sirius and EFK Jutteborg are both in the knockout quarterfinals of the Europa League too. So Swedish side's having a really good year in general. And I think we're in a really good spot right now. I'm still a bit peeved about the A. AIK game. I think we've done all right. I'd say I was just more of a C plus type of window, but I do think we've had some good signings come in. Just less of the young amazingness. Although you still probably should include the likes of Varga in there, who despite only starting zero matches, has managed five goals so far. All of them have come off the bench. So I think he's definitely going to be very useful when he does need to start matches because I feel like he can definitely offer something against other teams. And that's that's encouraging. So that brings us to an end here. I have no idea how long this is going to be because it's just been so much recording and so many different games to put in there and so much other stuff. But nevertheless, if you have enjoyed it up to this point and you've enjoyed the episode, drop a like. That'd be fabulous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe too. That would be delightful. I should be switched, of course, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays, really ramping things up with Treaty United, trying to get things a little bit quicker. So tomorrow on stream, Saturday morning, if you need something to do on Saturday, we'll be there because we're doing the entire Champions League groups in a single stream. So that's going to be fun, and I'll see you guys soon. Hold your gun, Capybara, uh, bye bye.